I have not done a book haul since August so I feel like this is going to be a little bit of a long video so you might want to grab yourself a drink and a snack. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Becca and today I have my last like normal book haul of the year. There is still going to be as usual a Christmas wish list unboxing around the Christmas time. I think it's going to go up on Boxing Day. So there is still going to be another haul type video but this one is my final normal book haul I think of 2021. So because I haven't done one in so long we have quite a few books to get through today. I have I think 56 six maybe 52 books in total thankfully some of them can be grouped together and talked about all at once so I won't have to go through them all individually as usual this haul is going to be split into places where I acquired all of these books from so in today's haul we have books that were sent to me by either the publisher or the author books that were gifted books I bought secondhand books I bought brand new special editions that are from book boxes but not part of their monthly subscription and monthly subscription box books so I am quite eager to get stuck into this book haul but before we get started I would like to introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video which is once again the wonderful book of the month so a big thank you to book of the month for continuing to support my channel so if you guys are unfamiliar with book of the month at all they are a US only book subscription where you can choose from a curated selection of brand new hardback releases every single single month and have one delivered to your door at a heavily discounted price. Like cheaper than you're going to find them at your standard store. Now Book of the Month have a great selection across a variety of genres. I've had quite a lot of thrillers from them. They pretty much always have a romance pick and they do have a great selection of fantasy as well. And they also have keywords about each book on the website which lets you know like what kind of thing you can expect from the book alongside the synopsis. So as an example the keywords for the December romance pick are happy, quirky, love triangle and foodie. So not only do book of the month just generally have really great pricing, for December they have an insanely cheap offer like I cannot believe that this is the offer for this month but if you click on the link in my description box pick whatever book it is that you fancy. For first time subscribers as well you can pick from the add-ons if none of the books of the month are taking your fancy but if you enter the code jolly at checkout you will get your first book of the month book for five dollars. Five dollars for a brand new hardback release. To bring you guys this video, Book of the Month have very kindly sent me all of their December selections as well as one of their add-ons to show to you guys. So let's have a look what Book of the Month are offering for December. Starting with the one in the blue box. You do also get a bookmark every month with a quote on and I really really love this one because it says if you wish upon a star you might read your TBR. The only thing that's going to get me through my TBR these days is wishing. Let's be real. So the one that we had in the box was a memoir pick and this one is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford and this one is a moving coming of age memoir about the complications of family and the resilience of love. The one that would probably have been my pick is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This this one is their December romance pick and it's kind of like a Christmas parent trap about twins who decide to revive their old habit from when they were children of swapping places. The December contemporary fiction pick is Olga Dies Dreaming by Sochil Gonzalez. This one is about two siblings who are vying for the American dream up until Hurricane Maria drags their estranged mother back into their lives. The thriller pick for December is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This one follows a woman and when she was 12, 16, Teenage girls in her town went missing and her father was convicted for the murder. However, as an adult, a teenage girl goes missing in her town and she starts to have flashbacks to the time when it happened when she was younger and thinks that they may somehow be connected. In December, we also have a fabulism pick, which is A History of Wild Places by Shea Earnshaw. And this one is about the search for a missing woman who was last seen entering a forest town with secrets. As I briefly mentioned earlier, aside from the core monthly picks, Book of the Month also has a selection of add-ons and one of the add-ons for December is the Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. This one is a collection of essays about humanity. I believe that the Anth Anthropocene age is the age that we are currently in and it is about 
humans and the planet and I think that most of these have been adapted from his podcast. So once again, a fantastic selection of books from Book of the Month across a range of different genres. And if any of these look interesting to you at all, please do not hesitate to head to my description box, click on the link and jump on that deal. Enter code Jolly at checkout and get your first Book of the Month book for $5. And once again, a huge thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I think the first section we are going to tackle is the books that were sent to me by the author or the publisher. I do have one ebook here and we all know if I don't start with the ebooks then I forget about them but the one that I have as an ER that I was approved for on NetGalley is The Monarchs by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. So this one is the sequel to The Ravens which is a young adult slash new adult witchy kind of thriller that follows two girls who are part of this sorority called The Ravens. One of them is a legacy member and she is going to be the president of the sorority. The other one is a new student who doesn't know that she has any witchy abilities but she decides to pledge for the ravens and there is some ominous stuff going on in the background because all of the members of the sorority are going missing one by one so the two even though they don't like each other kind of have to team up to get to the bottom of what is going on here the other one i have was sent to me by the author which is stormblood by jeremy Saul. this one was essentially pitched to me by the author as being a lot like red rising by pierce brown which spoiler alert golden sun is definitely going to be high up there on my favorite books of the this year. So when Jeremy contacted me and said that this book would not exist without Red Rising, I had to give it a chance and I'm definitely hoping to read this one before the end of the year as well. So this one follows a guy who is a reaper, which I think is essentially a soldier, and this organization or planet or something, it's called Harmony, injected all of the soldiers with something called Storm Tech and also created an illegal drug market around it. So when the war is over, the main character walked away from this organization. However, he is compelled to return when his Reaper colleagues or his like ex Reaper colleagues all start to go missing. So I think next we will tackle the books that I bought secondhand. The first of those is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I admit that I don't know a whole ton about this. I've just heard that it's real good and it's the kind of book that I feel like I would like to go into blind. And I do definitely associate this book with G from Book Roast. So I feel like G has very much influenced me picking this up when I saw it secondhand. I always imagine Blake Crouch's books to be very dense or like very twisty sci-fi. So I'm really hoping that this delivers on my expectations without having really done any research. But I think that this one, it deals with alternate realities. We're following a guy who's kidnapped and when he wakes up, he's in this reality where like he's living his life, but it's not his life and his wife isn't his wife. And instead of having like a mediocre job, he's somebody famous in this world. I also picked up Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero, which is a book that I have not heard great things about, but I really want to give it a chance. I think that this is a kind of tongue-in-cheek comedy horror that is a parody of Scooby-Doo. So we're following this group of adults who, when they were teenagers, they were the Light and Summer Detective Club, and they put this guy away, essentially, for whatever crimes he committed. However, as adults, they think that they may have unmasked the wrong person or that person's free again. Haven't heard great things about this, but I haven't heard a great deal of people talk about it either. So fingers crossed I enjoy it. I also saw The Waking Fire by Anthony Ryan, which is book one in the Draconis Memoria. This does not have a synopsis on it, and it does not have one on the first page either. And I do want to read Anthony Ryan, but the book that I wanted to start with from him was Blood Song, but I saw this one for £2.50. So I picked it up. I'm assuming that it contains dragons. That is all I know. I pretty much just pick this up because I stumbled across it second hand so I'm probably not going to get to this anytime soon but it's good to have because it's rare that you see adult fantasy just out and about in the world second hand like it's like unicorn shit. And the final book I picked up second hand was Lover Unbound by J.R. Ward. Now at this point I have not started the series but I do own book one and this one is like I don't think it says what it is but it's either book five or six or something it's way up there in this series. This one is an adult paranormal series that follows those vampires who are part of this Black Dagger Brotherhood. That's all I can say about it. But this one was 50p on a car outside of the bookshop in my town. So since it's such a long series, for 50 pence, might as well pick it up in case I do like the series and want to continue. The book that I was gifted was sent to me by one of my patrons, Lovely Ash. So thank you very much, Ash. And that one was The Fine Prince by Lauren Asher. This one is the start of Dreamland Billionaires. And I'm not sure about the series as a whole, but I think that this first one for sure is inspired 
created by Walt Disney as like the person or it takes the concept of Walt Disney because Walt Disney wasn't like a great guy and it follows this guy who runs like the most important successful theme park in the world and this woman who criticized what he was doing at this place that's called Dreamland. Instead of firing her he offers her a job and it's a romance between those two. Ash really loved it so I hope that I do too. Moving on to the books that I bought new which is the biggest stack that we have. We're starting off with June by Frank Herber. I pretty much picked this up because it is the Waterstones edition. Not interested in the movie of this which I know a lot of people are talking about at the minute or have been recently and I wasn't overly interested in the book up until Aaron from Books and Busy read it and said it was really good and when it comes to like epic fantasy and sci-fi myself and Aaron tend to have pretty similar tastes so when I saw this very pretty edition that I think is going to sell out pretty quickly I decided that I would grab it. I don't know what this is about. It's a sci-fi and there's big sandworms and Timothy Chalamet plays a guy in the movie. That's all I can tell you. My pre-order of Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson also recently came in. This one is the third book in the, is it called the Cytover series? I believe somebody told me. But the first book is Skyward and it follows a girl called Spencer who wants to join this fighter pilot academy on the planet where she lives because there is an alien race called the Krell that are essentially just hounding her people and stopping them from living on the surface of the planet so they all live underground and Spencer wants to join the fight however the authorities of this planet are very reluctant to let her because her father was branded a deserter and a coward so Spencer pretty much doesn't believe this about her father so while she is struggling to get into this academy where everything's pretty much against her she's also trying to get to the bottom of what actually happened to her father. We have two Katie Robert books. These are the last two books in the Wicked Villain series which is The Sea Witch and Queen Takes Rose. If you guys are unfamiliar with the Wicked Villain series it is adult BDSM erotica that are also Disney retellings but where the heroine falls in love with the villain of the story as opposed to the hero. The heroes do sometimes play a part in them like I think that this one is a thruple but these ones are book five and six in the series. I attempted to read this entire series in a week and got very 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 burnt out on smut so I gave up and these two are now the last ones that I need to read in the series. So The Sea Witch is a Little Mermaid retelling with Ursula, Eric and Ariel and Queen Takes Rose is Sleeping Beauty so that is Maleficent and Aurora. A series in a week vlog that I did complete was the Bone Witch series by Rinch Peko. I already had book one but I had to buy book two which is Heart Forger and book three which is Shadow Glass to be able to make the video. But the Bone Witch series is a YA trilogy that follows a girl called Taya who is a bone witch or a necromancer. So her brother has been fighting in this war and her family gets the news that he has died. When his body is returned to be buried, Taya is devastated and she throws herself like over his grave and accidentally raises him from the dead because she has no idea that she actually has these powers. So when word gets out that Taya has done this, an esteemed bone witch from wherever the Asher live. Asher are like geisha with magical abilities in here but she takes Taya away to the rest of the Asha where she can be trained in her powers. This is also told in two timelines so we have a present timeline where Taya has been disgraced from the Asha. The Asha want nothing to do with her anymore and also in a past timeline which is the narrative of like how she was taken to the Asha in the first place and what happened to get her in this present situation that she's in now. I also picked up The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I've read this one as well. This one is an adult fantasy dark academia story that centers around this secret society called the Alexandrian Society. Six young people who are considered the most powerful magicians in the world are taken for not like a trial. There's no competition or trial elements in this book but they have a one-year period where they have to prove that they are worthy to join the Alexandrian Society and they know from the very beginning that only five of them are going to make it so there's a lot of like distrust running through this because they're all essentially competing against each other because they know one of them can't make it through. And the last four books that I bought brand new are all of the same books and I said when I bought all of these that if I didn't love this book which I have now read that I may unhaul them. I think I might wait until the next book in the series is released and if it doesn't pick up if I don't give the next one five stars I may part with some of these because I have four editions of 
Empire of the Vampire by G. Christos. So I'll just run through the editions <laughs> real quick. We have the Waterstones edition, which is the one that I actually read. The Forbidden Planet edition, which is blue instead of red. We have the Goldsboro edition, which is silver with purple sprayed edges. And then we have my favorite edition, which is the Illumicrate one with stenciled edges and a gold spine. So Empire of the Vampire by G. Kristoff is an adult fantasy. It's the first book in his new adult grimdark fantasy series where we're following a guy called Gabriel de Leon who is the last silver saint. The silver saints are a religious order who are tasked with fighting back against the forces of darkness. As 30 years prior to the start of this story, the sun went down one day and didn't come up. So now the world is plagued with vampires and the vampires are pushing back trying to eradicate humanity. This is another book that is told in a past and a present timeline because the way this book is structured is that Gabriel has been captured by the vampires for killing the Forever King and before they execute him they want him to tell his story as he is the last Silver Saint so that his knowledge and the knowledge and lore of the Silver Saints isn't lost forever. So we have a present timeline where he's telling the story, a very early past timeline which is his origins and then one that's like 15 years after that very early one where he is searching for an important item called the Holy Grail. So if I do unhaul some of these, I mean, you'll see them in an unhaul video, but um, I think I'm most likely to keep these two because this is a reading copy and this is my favorite. I might just unhaul if I do unhaul any, the Forbidden Planet edition, because that to me is the least special aside from this, but this is the copy that I'm actually gonna read if I ever choose to reread this series. So before we get into the normal monthly subscription box books, we will go through the special editions that I ordered. There's six books in total, but there are two trilogies. They're both from Fairy loot. The first ones are the From Blood and Ash Fairy Loot editions. So we have From Blood and Ash, they all have stenciled sprayed edges, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and Crown of Gilded Bones. Now I ordered this series before I'd read Crown of Gilded Bones, which I, I didn't like very much, but I do really like From Blood and Ash and Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. So this is an indie published fantasy romance series following a girl called Poppy who is the maiden and she is never to be looked upon, never to be touched, never to experience pleasure. The love interest in this series is a guy called Hawk who has been tasked with guarding Poppy until her ascension. Now nobody apart from those who have gone through it know what the ascension is and those who have gone through it are sworn to secrecy. Obviously this is a fantasy romance so we can kind of see where that is going and then the other fairy loot special edition trilogy I have is the winter night trilogy which I love that these spines pretty much match like they have the same style but these ones are the bear and the nightingale winter of the witch and the girl in the tower and this one is an adult historical fantasy series following a girl called vasya who lives in this northern russian town in the 14th or 15th century i can never remember for sure but it was at the time that old russia was at war with the mongol empire and vasya has the ability to communicate with the spirits of the forest vasya's entire town do believe leave in and leave tribute to the spirits of the forest but she is the only one who can see them and one day Vasya's father decides to get remarried to this very devout woman who thinks that the spirits of the forest are demons so she brings a priest with her and this is set in the time when Russia and all of Europe were being converted to Christianity and this priest convinces the people of the town to stop believing in and giving tribute to the spirits of the forest which leaves the town open to attack from the evil spirits. So book one mainly follows that like folklore magical element and then book two is more about the war between russia and the mongol empire and book three ties the two together one of my favorite series of all time really really love it very atmospheric so moving into the monthly subscription box books i know less about these because obviously i didn't go out and seek them for myself they were curated by the book boxes themselves but we will start off with fairy loot as i've just done the special editions from them and we have once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber this is a spin-off series to the caraval series i believe and it's like i think it's heavily romantic and has a relationship between a fate which i think the connection to this is that it has one of the immortals from caraval which is somebody who hasn't read caraval that means absolutely nothing to me but i've heard that this is really good and that people who didn't like caraval may still enjoy it i do at this point plan to to read Caraval first before I even think about reading this. But if I don't like Caraval, I will 
still give this one a try. The most recent fairy loot book was Jade Fire Gold by June C. L. Tan. This one has a very brief synopsis, so I'm just gonna read it to you. It says, in an empire on the brink of war, Arn is no one with no past or no family. Alton is a lost heir, his future stolen away as a child. When they meet, Alton sees in Arn a path to reclaiming the throne. Arn sees a way to finally unlock her past and understand her lethal magical abilities. In the August and September boxes, I think, Fairy Loot had a couple of additional paperbacks as well as their books of the month. So we have Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. This follows a girl who is a beastkeeper at the night zoo. And one day I think she accidentally sets the night zoo up on fire and that ruins the plans of a guy called Econ who is destined to become an elite warrior. I love how nonsensical my breakdowns of these are because I don't really know what they're about. The other one is After Love by Tanya Byrne. This one is more of a contemporary fantasy and I think one of the characters is dead. Yeah, so I think that it's about two girls who were dating and one of them dies and the other one starts to like haunt the other one but in a romantic kind of way. And there's also a group of fierce girl reapers that Ash, who's the one who died, is going to join. We also have These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. This one is a fairy romance. So you'd think I would be more excited about this. It's about a girl who makes a deal with the Fae. She makes a deal with the King of the Unseely Court, but I just can't get over how much the under dust jacket art looks like Rowan and Resand. So I'm like, is this just SJM fanfic, you know? I have heard good things about it, but I have heard like it is just SJM fanfic, which I could like it because it reads a lot like Sarah J Maas, but we'll have to wait and see. And then we also have Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer, which is a book that I was previously uninterested in because I'm not interested in A Curse So Dark and Lonely, but something about the synopsis in this made me more excited to read it. So this is set in a kingdom on the brink of disaster where a plague is ravaging the land. However, the the elixir to cure it is rare. So we're following somebody who is an apothecary apprentice who along with her friends steals the ingredients to make this elixir and starts to distribute it. However, the cure has stopped working. For the Goldsboro GSFF, which is a new subscription for me, it's the Goldsboro Sci-Fi and Fantasy Fellowship. We have three picks, one for September, October and November. And if you want to hear my thoughts on these, I am currently reading this one. And I will also be reading these two in this week that I'm filming this video. So um, stay tuned for a vlog on that but the September pick was Among Thieves by MG Kuhn. This one follows somebody called The Butcher who is like an assassin for one of the crime gangs of the city called The Saints and she overhears somebody organizing to steal this very valuable artifact so she decides that she wants to be the one to complete the job and find the artifact so that she can gain her freedom from the guild master who she's been on the run from pretty much her entire life. To help her she needs to recruit some of the saints so we have like a smuggling captain, a master of disguise, a noble son with quick fingers, and the ex-captain of the palace guard, and she convinces them to come along and help her steal this artifact. The October pick was The Actual Star by Monica Byrne. This one is an adult sci-fi standalone that deals with three reincarnated souls and time travel. So I think the oldest point in this book is A Mayan Kingdom, and the furthest forward point in time is a futuristic city on the brink of war. And then the November pick was All of Us Villains by Amanda Foody and Christian Lynn Herman. This one is a fantasy that sounds a lot like an unkindness of magicians. So it is a group of villainous people who are competing in this competition or series of trials to win the most power for their family and become the ones who like rule over it. From the Abraxas box we have two. The October pick was A Dark and Starless Forest by Sarah Hollowell. This one is a YA fantasy following a girl who has eight siblings and lives in this cottage surrounded by some menacing woods. And the reason that they live there is because the wider world isn't safe for people with magic and she does feel safe in the place that she lives until her siblings start to go missing one by one. We also have The Wild Ones by Nafisa Azad. This one seems like it's more of a fabulism novel than a fantasy. It follows a group of people who've essentially been through terrible things Things, and they gain access to somewhere called the in-between which is a place of pure magic and mystery. And then I think our final stack are from 
a Luma Crate. I think we're nearly there. <laughs> no, we're not. We have a whole other stack after this. Oh my god. So the book for Afterlight by Luma Crate, which is a Luma Crate's quarterly romance subscription. I do pay for this. This is not a rep book, but it is All the Feels by Olivia Dade. This one just sounds like a standard contemporary romance, can't lie. So the love interest in here is a guy who has the star and role on the biggest show in TV. However, because of some things that have gone on in his past, he's starting to exhibit some destructive behavior. So the tabloids and the showrunners agree that he needs help. So the main female character in here is a therapist who's essentially been sent to help him out. The November book for Aluma Crate was Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I have read 50 pages of this because I had an e-arc of it but I couldn't continue because the formatting was just so bad that I um, couldn't make it through. But this one is a retelling of the Goose Girl and it follows this girl who was the maid of somebody who was betrothed to a prince. However on the way to actually go and marry the prince they swapped places. So the maid is now masquerading as the princess and the princess is spending a year as a maid. So when the story opens out we are following the maid masquerading as a princess and she is the goddaughter of the gods of death and fortune and when she got to a certain age they told her that she had to choose between them but she didn't want to so she is trying to gain her freedom because her godparents are essentially still harassing her and she wants to move to somewhere outside of the reach of the gods so while she's masquerading as this princess she's essentially pulling off a series of elaborate heists to gain the money to move but she accidentally steals something that's a favor of another the god and the god curses her and tells her that if she doesn't give back everything she's taken including the life of the princess that she stole then she's going to turn into a pile of diamonds and rubies. The next one which I think is the October book is I Am Widow by Ziran J. Zhao. This one is a sci-fi I think and it centers around these fighter pilots that are the the things that they fly are big robots that kill aliens but this is a very sexist society so while the boys are eligible to go fly these things the female pilots are treated as concubines and the main character of this book offers herself up as a concubine pilot with the idea of killing the guy who murdered her sister in mind. I think somebody left a comment on my unboxing when I unboxed it and said that the characters in here are based on real life people. And the assumedly September book is The Devil Makes Three by Tori Bovolino. This one is a YA fantasy horror that centers around these two teenagers who absolutely hate each other. I think one of them works in this like magical library. I don't know if the other one works there or is there for another reason but they accidentally release the devil from a book and then they have to work together to get the devil back inside it. So the last stack of books we have are the book of the month books from my sponsorship packages from November and October that I am adding to my collection. So we have eight of these in total. The first one is Apples Never Fall by Liam Moriarty. This one, assumedly because it's Liam Moriarty, it's going to be a thriller or a mystery. I haven't read a book from her but I have um, Big Little Lies and it is a family drama about a group of siblings whose mother goes missing and they don't know whether they should report it to the police or not. One of the romance picks was How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. This is about a woman who is obsessed with Keanu Reeves so when she finds out that he's going to be married in three months she decides that she's going to drive across the country and stop it so she takes her best friend with her who is actually in love with her and he does not know why she agrees but I'm assuming this is a friends to lovers story and that they grow closer during the trip. We then have The Collective by Alison Galen. This one is an adult thriller that follows a woman whose son was murdered and she thinks she knows who's, who murdered her son but no one has done anything about it so she ends up joining this group of women called The Collective who are actually performing a series of revenge killings on the people who have wronged them. We then have The Perishing by Natasha Dion. This one is a speculative fiction novel about a woman who wakes up in 1930s Los Angeles and has no idea how she got there and one day she meets a firefighter who she has no recollection of ever meeting but she has been drawing his face for years. One that I've read is The X Hex by Erin Sterling. This one is a really fun witchy adult romance in the style of like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and 
Halloween Town, where we're following this woman who knows that she's a witch. She had a summer romance with a guy who is the descendant of the founders of the town where she lives, which is like this Halloween Town location. And they have a bad breakup when he has to go home to Wales. So when she's drunk one night, she curses him with a Bath and Body Works candle. Now, even though she knows she has magical powers, she doesn't consider this to be a real spell because of the haphazard way it was performed. So she doesn't think anything of it until a few years, I think maybe 10 years after they had this relationship, the guy comes back to town to perform some Founders Day duties and everything starts to go horribly wrong. Give this five stars, really enjoyed it. We then have The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker. This one I believe is a young adult fantasy following a girl who is half Japanese Shinigami and half British Reaper. And this story takes place partially in London and partially in Japan, I believe. We have another adult thriller, which is Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. This one follows a girl who when she was a teenager all of her neighbors were brutally murdered outside of the barn and her brother becomes the most recent suspect and I think she left town for a while and she comes back to repair the relationship with her teenage daughter and I'm assuming that something about these neighbors murders is also dredged up. And then the final book in this haul, we finally made it, is The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman. This one is the third and assumedly final book. These books have been being published for a long time, but it's the third book in the Practical Magic series. I don't know if the series has like an official name, but Practical Magic is the book that the movie was based on, which is such a good movie. And it is about like curses and family drama and all of that stuff. I actually really want to rewatch Practical Magic because it has been a long long ass time. But yeah, this is the third book in the series that follows the same family. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I have hauled between the end of August and now. That was exhausting. I thought we were making really good time throughout the beginning of this, but then we really, we really slowed it down. So down in my comments, please let me know if you've read any of these books and what you guys thought of them. And of course, a big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Please remember that if you click on the link right at the top of my description box and enter the code JOLLY at checkout, you can get your very first book from Book of the Month for just $5. But that is it from me today, guys. So if you head down into my description box, you will also find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my Bookish Candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code we're closing in one week, two weeks. So if you would like to place an order before Christmas, then please get that in sooner rather than later. But that is it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go when nobody knows. With guns sitting under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.